Hey everyone, in this video we'll be solving a normal shock problem. You can see a schematic over here of the normal shock. State 1 is the upstream conditions, state 2 is the downstream conditions. And we'll be solving the problem for the two knowns here. The first is the upstream Mach number, which is 3.8, which is supersonic. And the ratio specific heats gamma is equal to 1.4. We will be solving for the following variables. The downstream Mach number, the static pressure ratio across the shock, the static density ratio, the static temperature ratio, the stagnation pressure ratio, and the ratio ratio of the static pressure upstream to the stagnation pressure downstream. You might be familiar with these four terms here. While these two might be a little bit more obscure, this term here can be used to solve for the entropy increase across a shock. And this one, if you flip it to get P0 2 over P1, you might notice as the rayleigh pitot formula. We'll be using four different methods for this example problem, and they should all give us the same results if we've done them correctly. The first are the equations derived in my other video on normal shock relations. The second uh, is using the tables in the back of any compressible flow textbook. And the only reason that we can do it uh, for this problem is because we've specified that the ratio of specific heats is equal to 1.4. The third way is using the Virginia Tech calculator online. And the fourth way uh, is using my MATLAB functions, which are based on the VT calculator. You'll be able to find links, notes, and references in the description below. Okay, so we're going to start with the equations. You can note that everything, all of these variables that we want to solve for, is only a function of the upstream Mach number m1 and gamma, and those are both given. So again, all of these are only a function of m1 and gamma. And so the following equations are just plug and chug. So you just plug in m1 m1 and gamma into the equations that we derived in the other video, and you get the answer. So for the downstream Mach number m2, we have this expression here, again, only a function of m1 and gamma, m1 and gamma, and don't forget to take the square root. And so we get the downstream Mach number is 0 0.4407, and it has to be subsonic. This is less than one, so that checks out. For the static pressure ratio, P2 over P1, we have this expression here, again, only a function of m1 and gamma, and note that there is a plus one here. Sometimes people forget that, and solving for the static pressure ratio gives us 16 16.68, which indicates that the pressure increases across a normal shock. Now we'll move on to the static density ratio shown here. Again, only a function of m1 and gamma. And solving for that ratio, we get 4.4568. So the static density increases across a normal shock. Then we have the static temperature ratio, which is a function of the static pressure ratio and the static density ratio, which can be derived from uh, just plugging in the ideal gas law for both of these. And you end up getting that it's P2 over P1 times rho 1 over rho 2. Note that this is flipped from what it is up here here. So we can plug that in from the previous whiteboard, 16.68. And for this one, we have the 4.4568 to the negative one because it's flipped. And we get that the static temperature ratio is 3.7426. So the static temperature increases across a normal shock as well. Now we get to a term that I did not derive in my normal shock relations video, which is the stagnation pressure ratio across a normal shock. But we can write this out in terms of a few pressure ratios that we do know. So we want to get to P0 2 over P0 1. So we can say that the first term is P0 2 over P2. So we have the P naught two in the numerator, but now we have P two here. So how do we get rid of that? We can put in the static pressure ratio, P2 over P1, and that gets rid of the P2, but now we have a P1 in the denominator and we want a P0 one, so we can multiply by P1 over P0 one. And you'll note that this here is a function of the downstream Mach number M2. This is just a static to stagnation pressure ratio. It's an isentropic relation. Here we have the static pressure ratio, which is only a function of the upstream Mach number M1. And then this is the stagnation to static pressure ratio, uh, just flipped in this case, but it's only a function of M1. So now we can plug an expression for these terms in each of the parentheses. This one here is the stagnation to static pressure at state two, the downstream state, and that's just the normal relation here. P2 over P1 is the exact same expression that I took from the previous whiteboard and just plugged it in here, only a function of M1. And then the P1 over P0 one is the stagnation to static pressure ratio just flipped. So it's the same expression here as was here, except instead of the M2, we have the M1. And note that there's a negative in the exponent because it is uh, flipped from what this one is. I mentioned that in the stagnation to static pressure ratio downstream uh, of the normal shock. It's a function of the downstream Mach number M2. And so we can write the M2 as a function of the upstream Mach number M1 and gamma. And so this entire expression here for P0 2 over P0 1 is still only a function of only M1 and gamma. And if we plug in the appropriate values into this equation here, we get that the stagnation pressure ratio across a normal shock is 0.16447. So we can see that across a normal shock, our stagnation pressure decreases. 
is. The last term we're solving for is P1 over P02. I didn't derive this in my normal shock relations video, so we'll just do it super quick here. We're gonna break it up into two known pressure ratios like we did for the previous one. So we have P1 over P01, that's a stagnation to static relation just flipped. And then we have the one that we derived on the previous board, which is P01 over P02. You can see the P01s cancel to give us our desired term. This here is the same as from the previous whiteboard, so we plug that in. Note that it has the negative exponent because again, it's flipped from the normal stagnation to static expression. And then this guy here is the same as from the previous whiteboard, except the previous whiteboard was P02 over P01. You can see it's flipped, so we have the result from the previous whiteboard to the negative one. If we plug in the M1 and the gammas into this expression, we end up getting that P1 over P02 is equal to 0.05247. And sometimes you'll see this flipped as P02 over P1, and that's equal to 19.06. Now we're gonna go into the Modern Compressible Flow Book by John Anderson. And we're gonna go all the way back to table A2. Here we go. A2, and you can see that it says normal shock properties. Now you'll see at the top here that we have the upstream Mach number, M1, that's our known. We know that these tables only work for gamma is equal to 1.4, and these are all the variables that we just saw for on the board that we can check now with these tables. Also note that all these numbers are written in scientific notation, so if we're looking for Mach number 3.8, we need to look for 0.38 plus here you can see I found 3.8 for the upstream Mach number, and so we'll just read off the values across in the same row. Here we have 16.68 for the static pressure ratio. Here we have 4.457 for the static density ratio. Here we have 3.743 for the static temperature ratio. Here we have 0.1645 for the stagnation pressure ratio. And here we have 19.06 for the stagnation to static, so that's P02 over P1. And then here, finally, we have 0.4407 for the downstream Mach number. And these all check out with the equations that we use, and they should because these are used, or these are from the equations. The third solution method is using the online VT calculator. So we can go to Google and we can type in VT calculator. And it's the first link up here, so we click on that, and it brings us to the page. And we're going to be using the normal shock relations section here. Note that our gamma input is already 1.4. That's one of our knowns. And the other known that we have is the upstream Mach number M1, and that is 3.8. We'll press calculate, and we get all these values here. And these all uh, are the same as the values that we calculated from the other uh, two things that we already did. Uh, note that this here is P1 over P02, and so from the tables in the back of the compressible flow textbook, it's P02 over P1. Let's just make sure that it checks out, so we'll copy this, go down to the scratch pad, one divided by that, evaluate, and we do indeed get 19.06. Uh, if you don't want to use the upstream Mach number, you can change the input. And so let's just say that we want to use uh, P2 over P1. Let me just copy this here. I'll change this to P2 over P1, plug it in, and we, when we press calculate, it shouldn't change anything. So calculate, and it doesn't change anything. If we change it to a different value, it'll obviously change these values. As our final method in our normal shock example, we can get these solution variables from a MATLAB function I wrote. Uh, here, which is called normalshock.m, uh, which is based directly off of the VT calculator code. It can be found at my GitHub using the link that is shown here, which you can also find in the video description. And so we want to get all the solution variables for our known inputs of the M1 and gamma. So we can look down in the usage section of the help for this function. Uh, and note that we want to use the first one here. So it, it will return a structure of all the solution variables and the output solution uh, variable we, will be called sol, short for solution, although you can call it whatever you want. So we're just going to copy this down to the command window down here, and we can change a couple of these, right? We want that the, the input value is the upstream Mach number, so we want to change this to 3.8. Uh, the input variable is the upstream Mach number, M1, and the G, or gamma, is the ratio of specific heats, 1.4, and we can note that we can leave out the out there because we want the structure of all the solution variables. So here we can just press enter and you can see that we get a structure up here, a structure called soul and it has the following variables. So you can see that all these output fields are the same as those values calculated by the other three methods, which is good. And so if we want to access one of the variables, we can type for instance, sol.m2, and that gives us our variable answer, which is equal to 0 0.4407. And we can check uh, what the variable variable types are by typing in whose, and you can see that 
Uh, soul is in fact a structure and ants is in fact a double. Recall from the tables method that we had P naught two over P one instead of the P one over P naught two that this outputs. And so we can obtain that by the following. We just take the soul dot P one P naught two to the negative one. And that gives us our answer of 19.0603, which compares to the tables. So that's four ways that you can solve for the normal shock relations. Hope that was helpful and thanks for watching.